Hello everybody, it's your girl Connie. So welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm so, so grateful to be back again with another video. So just before we go into it, please make sure you subscribe uh, and you hit the subs and you know you hit the post notification on. I'm sorry. Um, and so on today's video, we're going to see uh, what am I is, you know, third serial videos where he's insulted and again, and this time he's meeting a 20 year old lady who left America for South Sudan um, and now owns 19 acres of farm. So this is going to be another very interesting video because it's women empowering, you know. And so I'm so, I'm really looking forward to know what he's going to talk about. So this video will be in two parts. So make sure, you know, you watch the first part and then let me know if you want to see the second part. Then, you know, we'll get um, right into it. So, so please, you know, welcome and let's get straight into this video and subscribe right now. Thank you. They don't get shocked knowing that this is coming from their own country? Actually, they do every time. And that is the thing that I want to impart in them, that we can actually grow our own. We can feed ourselves. Why are they shocked? Because we're so used to uh, depending on other countries to doing things for us, you know. So we don't believe in our own. And that is the narrative, the colonization narrative that we have. The eggplants are so beautiful. They're so vegan. They look delicious. Oh my goodness. Let me know if you like eggplants. And yes, she's right. I mean, I think we should stop depending on other people to feed us and get food from elsewhere. And we can make the food ourselves. The African soil is so healthy, so fertile that, you know, we don't need to go and buy stuff from outside the country. So let's empower Africa and let's buy, um, you know, from our agri you know, from our farmers because they work so hard and let's support them. We're adapted as a people and we want to change that. We are great people. Africa, our motherland, is a beautiful place to be. You know, the funny thing is that whenever you're in Africa, the feeling of, 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 of acceptance and being with your own people, I don't have to worry about uh, racial profiling or being harassed on the streets like I did in America. You know, you racial profiling happens in the West, you know that she's right <laughs> she's right of course of course and i think when you're back home um and you're you know everybody looks like you and th the question of color doesn't really come up it doesn't really exist and it's different it's different so but i'm curious to know because in the last video i think she's kenyan actually i thought because she has a kenyan accent but she's south sudanese so did she grow up in kenya or something i have no idea but yeah maybe we'll find let's find out so just being with your own people and doing the things that you love and seeing it making an impact is amazing. There comes our favorite Ghanaian, you know, boy, farmer. You know, I think he's in his element right now because he's a farmer actually. And um, yeah, he, he seems happy. I think he's going to enjoy this one. <laughs> Good morning from South Sudan, the world youngest country. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby, right here in the farm. You know what? I told you guys that I was born in a village. I'm also a farmer. So farming videos are my all-time favorite videos that I enjoy doing. I've been telling each and everyone out there that it's time for each and every young African out there to own a farm because... 60% of the world arable land is here in Africa. Right. So why are you guys wearing suits, sitting in bands as if um, you've made it and leaving all these things for others? I mean, in Africa, they even... What am I? It goes straight to the point. It's a strike thing, you know? So, if I mean, if, if it hits you, then you know what to do. And I think uh, it just makes most of us start thinking and, you know, just calling for change trainers to say that only poor people can own a farm so if you ask so many Africans do you want to be a farmer they'll tell you hell no because I don't want to be poor yeah I guess that's the old mentality you know because in back in the days you know when you're a farmer it, I mean farmer means poor which is not the case because um, modern agriculture has really changed and has really transformed so many lives and it's the future actually and I feel that not because you have a white collar job, you're rich. You're not. There are so many people who have blue collar jobs, carpenters, electricians, you know, name it. Agric you know, farmers are doing really good. So I think that's an old me mentality that we need to break down as well. And I feel that, you know, the new generation um, 
has is going to have like a big 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 impact on on you know on these subjects you know that you know and open people's minds and not not forget that you know every we all need every person in the society um is important and can create an impact and cr is creating an impact so i think that's just an old mentality but i feel it's part of changing you know the narrative as well and showing that young people can have a positive impact and also do jobs that were not considered before as classy or you know so yeah i i, I agree with him 100 percent. agriculture is the future <laughs>
yeah, I, it, it makes sense. I think it, it takes time. It took probably six years for her, but it, for other people, it, it can take 10 years, 20 years. So it's it's a process. So, wow. So I guess one thing led to another until she said to come back to South Sudan. South Sudan. So let's, let's hear her, what she has to say. Because at that point, I actually realized that what I had studied, because by career training, I did public health, specifically infectious disease epidemiology. Um, so after, after finishing my postgrad, um, I was conflicted. I feel like I had a passion deep within me that I had restricted for the longest time. Whoa. Yes. And that passion is? That passion is agriculture. And you decided to leave America and then come to South Sudan? To start farming? Yes. I don't know if I can check if something is wrong with you. I mean, can I check that? <laughs> they say great things are actually done by people who are, you call them crazy. You know, you don't have to be similar. You don't have to do or follow a path that everybody follows. Sometimes you just... That is so true. Oh my goodness. I love you, Joy. I, I love you already. That's all. And this is something that I try and teach my children. It's okay not to be normal. And normal is boring. Normal is so boring. When you look at great things that have been done by people, most of them are, you know, are what we call crazy. But they're not. They're right. They just don't look like all these, all these other people in the rat race doing the same thing, you know, so day in, day out. So that's right. I mean, when you're crazy, then just know you're, you know, you're doing great. So just embrace it and accept it. And you will see that, you know, things will just open up new horizons and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's okay to be crazy. Normal is boring. It's have to be different. And in difference, you can actually make an impact. So, I mean, if you want to be a farmer, definitely you grew up in Kenya. Right? Yes. So why not Kenya? But decided to come to South Sudan. Because this is my ancestral land. There is something so strong about home. You know, I believe that wherever you go in the world, your home is always going to call you back. East or West, home is best. I guess we all know this expression. East or West, home is best. It doesn't matter. So South Sudan is the land of my ancestors. I decided to come back and be with my people. Because when I'm here, I feel so much joy. You know? Right. Yes. When you're here, you feel so much joy. Just like that. <laughs> That's impressive. You know, I, I really want to know. Is farming capital intensive? Actually, no. Not at all. Starting a garden here in South Sudan is not capital intensive at all. You just need a little bit of money to get started with your equipment and of course money to, to hire employees to get your seeds and also put down the system for irrigation. Do you own this land? I do not own this land. Right now I am leasing the land but hopefully in the near future I want to, to, to own this land. How many years? Uh, just one, 12 more months and I'll be able to, to own this land hopefully. But I mean, meeting the people to lease the land to you, was it difficult? Um, it was not very difficult uh, because the leasing process, but the owning part is very difficult. Uh, it wasn't difficult to lease it because they were really excited about the whole idea of gardening, you know, and gardening also of farming in a completely different con context from how they used to, okay. you know, so it wasn't very difficult. Uh, the locals here plus the, the leaders were very open and they really embraced the, the, the entire idea. Well, I, I really wanted to know, which year did you move to South Sudan? I actually officially moved to South Sudan in 2019, okay. but before then I would just come and visit and go back. You come and visit and go back? Yes, I would come and visit. Whoa. Yeah. So I want to understand, yeah, when you move back, why you decided to start a farm? I mean, why agriculture in the first place? There's so many things. I mean, let me understand. Did you learn agriculture in school? I did not study agriculture. By so, career training, I'm actually, I studied public health. I studied um, infectious disease epidemiology. So why agric? My story is actually a little bit long. Uh, in 2017, I attended a conference on emerging trends in agriculture in Africa. Mm. And during one of the lectures, the, um, the, the person who was hosting actually had a very interesting topic. Um, uh, there were three countries that were being featured, uh, case studied, and South Sudan was one of them. Okay. And uh, the way they had featured South Sudan, they labeled it... Uh, a sleeping giant in agriculture. Hmm. A sleeping giant. So I guess symbolically it means there's so much potential in South Sudan and that's crazy. I mean, 
and I, I now understand why, I mean, you know, we're saying that South Sudan is the youngest country in Africa. They came out just recently, 2011, out of, um, you know, they, they gained their independence and then, you know, years of civil war. And now they have to reconstruct the country from scratch. So the potential is there. So it's a sleeping giant. And I, I know that if you tap in on Google, you know, like something about South Sudan, all you will see is war and starving children and poverty and, and, and you know, war chars and stuff like that. And oh my goodness, there is more, much more to South Sudan than that. And now they're reconstructing the country. So yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's a sleeping giant. And I mean, I, I get it. Good. And during that case study, the guy actually gave us a small activity in the lecture room. Yeah. He said, okay, everyone should go to their phones and try to type up, you know, agriculture or farming in Africa or in South Sudan and see what you get. I was really astounded because all the imagery and the pro portrayals that I saw on, on the internet were really pretty much of starving children, you know, military and... I told you. Exactly. It really broke my heart for a second. Mm -hmm. So what I did was immediately after that uh, conference, I decided to fly straight to Juba, South Sudan. That oh. was in 2017. I came to come and actually see the situation and do my market research and see what exactly is going on. And I'm sure you didn't see any war chars. You didn't see starving children. You didn't see all that, right? <laughs> That's all I love. I just love what I'm seeing right now because it's changing so, so, so many, so, so, so many uh, misconceptions about Africa and about South Sudan in this case, right? And even on my part, because for me, for many years, South Sudan was just war. I mean, South Sudan, civil war, you know, and which is incorrect. So I, I'm really, um, I'm, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy that we're getting to see this and today with the modern technology we can actually you know see from other people's eyes what's ex what exactly is going on and not what we see um, in the media when I arrived in Juba shockingly I did not see any starving children on the streets as the media was showing I did not see of course the military but it was not to that extent as it was being portrayed and then another thing that i saw in the market for sure was the fact that there was heavy dependence on importation we were pretty much importing more than 80 percent of all the fresh produce in in this in the country what make it make sense what can somebody just make it make sense it doesn't i mean Africa, the African soil is so fertile that we don't need to import anything, you know? We can make everything ourselves and we're importing from other countries. So I, her journey makes more sense now because you understand she wants to change that. She wants to feed her country, her ancestral, you know, um, uh, what do you say, farm or whatever. And she's right. 80%? That's a lot. And I know for a fact that for many years in Kenya, you know, we make rice, right? And we get rice from China or I don't know, from other countries, which it doesn't make sense because we have rice in our country. So why do we have to go and import rice from other places? So I guess that's another thing that another narrative we need to change and we need to know that we're capable of getting everything ourselves and i think the corona has really the corona crisis has really opened people's eyes in regards to all that knowing that we have to be self-sufficient because you never know what can happen in the future i mean all the borders are closed so what do you do i mean if you're depending 100 percent 80 percent on importation then there is a big problem and that has to that has to change so joy good job Whoa. From outside, yeah. Sometimes some of the produce are being imported all the way from India and Brazil. And it really got me to thinking, you know, why are we importing when we have vast arable land and we have resources, we have our majestic Nile just by our fingertips? Why don't we use that? So that was an opportune moment for me to really try to bridge the gap of food insecurity in my home country, you know? You're trying to say that the inspiration 
came from the fact that your country is importing food stuffs? Yes, my country is importing at least 80% of food from other countries, from neighboring countries and all the way from Brazil and India. And yet, we are capable. We have the, we have the skills and the resources. You know, to, 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 to feed ourselves. Tell me about what are you growing in here? Right now, we have a variety of vegetables. We do have kale. We have... Guys, and she's creating employment as well. She's creating employment as well. That's so inspiration. It's great. It's great, you know? And, oh, my goodness. I am, yeah, I am so impressed right now coriander we have zucchini we have uh eggplants we have green peppers and what else do we have we have okra it's really uh, a favorite among our yeah, locals you mentioned we have mangoes oh. you know? <laughs> like everywhere i think mangoes are everywhere and as a kid i used to love eating them raw they're not apparently it's not good especially if you have sensitive teeth um but mangoes raw mangoes are just so yummy just the crunchiness i love that so uh yeah i think we find mangoes everywhere <laughs> but probably more in south sudan let me know in the comments below maybe but yeah in this country since i came two things that i found in this country is mango and cattle see, there you go see, i mean like, i don't have to look far <laughs> everywhere is, man, mangoes everywhere along the now you see mangoes everywhere but hey let, let me tell you something i feel like Africa is just the same everywhere. Yes. This is where we do our cooking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we, we all do this. I mean, you go to the farm. Yes. What are you cooking? We're cooking beans today. Ah, no. Beans. Yes. Beans doesn't look so local, man. We're cooking <laughs> beans. Oh, <yes. laughs> you scared me, what am I? You scared me so much. So, but anyway, guys, that's it first part of the video so let me know if you'd like to have the second part of this video so just please like subscribe you know turn on your post notifications on so you can know when i post part two of this video but i'm counting on you guys to run the views up on this one and then you will get the second part so thank you so much for watching it's your girl connie and see you in the next video bye